Ale, ale, testimonies to share. Uh, four years ago at the conference, Medjugorje conference at Notre Dame, Kathy and Diane Freeby and Chuck Freeby set up a, a sheet in a, <laughs> in a closet in the monogram room, a uh, coat room, uh, just to have a camera to grab some testimonies. Our first testimony, I just saw Tony Bacuza walking by and I said, come with me. You're giving your testimony. I had no idea what a testimony was. All I knew is that Tony Pacuza was born in holy water. <laughs> and anything she had to say would be golden because mm -hmm. this woman we've known for many, many years. And she just is. I hope she doesn't yeah, get Every mad at me. morning she's at the Adoration Chapel at 5.30 to open it up. She's at there for Adoration and 6.30 Mass every day. 25 years every day. Listen to her testimony. It's just unbelievable. I thought, literally, she was born in holy water. Not the case. I remember, oh, I, I'll start telling her testimony. Listen, you just got to listen to Tony Tony Pacuza from South Bend. It was in October, beautiful fall weather. Oh, yeah. Nice. I went very reluctantly. You did? Were you, um, what were you thinking? I went because my husband wanted to go, and I didn't want to go. You didn't want to go? I wasn't at that place spiritually. And, but I knew I needed to go because of him, because uh -huh. he was not going to go without me. Oh, so it was for him that you went? And I went for him. That we was were getting, a sacrifice. We were getting on the plane, and if somebody would have said, you're not going, I would have said, it's fine. Wow. I, I'd walk, I was ready to walk away from it. Oh, my gosh. And when I went, I was very embarrassed with myself, spiritually. Mm -hmm. We're on the plane and the ladies are pulling out their rosaries and prayer books. Mm -hmm. I'm pulling out my Women's Day magazines and all. I thought, oh, I can get caught up on this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and um, when we got to Michigoria, the first day I thought, what am I doing here? Wow. Did it feel very uncomfortable? Or I just felt, this isn't for me. I could not visualize myself being in a spiritual place for a whole week and praying. Right. And then uh, we went up across, no, it wasn't Cross Mount, and it was um, Apparition Hill the next day. Mm -hmm. And sat down on a stone, and all of a sudden, I started weeping uncontrollably. Wow. Couldn't stop. And from that time on, I didn't want to go home. There was just total peace that came over me, and that just changed the composition of the whole trip. Oh, my gosh. And 
I guess I didn't realize the spiritual gains until probably a few months after I got home. When we got home, somebody said, do you feel like you're changed? And I says, well, no. I said, I say an extra rosary. And that was it. Lent came and uh, I thought, I'm going to start going to daily mass. Mm -hmm. Lent ended and I thought, well, that wasn't so hard to go to mass every day. So I thought, I'm going to try it. Mm -hmm. So since 1988 then, Lent of 88, I've been going to Mass every day. Oh my God. Going for Eucharistic adoration every day. So I feel that's how Mary had entered my heart through Magic Maria. That is awesome. That's so huge. It was. Yeah. But Mary took small steps with me. She did. She knew she couldn't take big steps. This. <laughs> <laughs> but that's awesome. that's awesome. It is. Can you tell the story about how you ended up getting the money to go? That's kind of a neat story. Well, well my husband wanted to go, so of course we didn't have the money. He went to bingo every week. <laughs> 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 and he told Father Blank, he said, I'm going to win the $500 jackpot tonight so I can go to Medjugorje. Father says, you're going to win it. He, Father blessed his card and he won it. <laughs> he came home and he told me and my stomach turned in knots. I thought, oh no, I don't want to go. I, don't. I was not happy with this. But I thought, okay, we're far off from having the total amount. He goes next week. He tells Father again, I'm going to win this $500 tonight, and then I'll have enough for me, and then my summer school money can be for Tony. So, he won. <laughs> <laughs> and I was not pleased. Okay. I was not pleased, but like I said, I really didn't want to go. Sure. Wow. But it was the greatest thing that happened. And so you've never been back? I've never been back, but I've sent three of my children. Three, oh my Three God. of my children, and in all honesty, I really feel Mary has held each of them to the faith. Mm -hmm. I can see two of them where they go to daily mass, but the girls go to daily mass. Wow. My son uh, in Florida, he's married to a Catholic, but not a good one but he is the one that's taking the children to Mass every Sunday and raising them as Catholics. And I really feel it's through their trips to Medjugorje wow. that Mary is sustaining them. Mm -hmm. And then my youngest one, who never had the opportunity to go, I think just the fact that all the rest of us go, I think Mary has kept him intact with the faith too. Mm -hmm. So. Wow, that must give you peace then to know that they have. That, I was telling somebody yesterday, if I have any blessing in my life, is that all my children are in the faith, mm -hmm. and they all practice the faith. That is remarkable. I feel that's more important to me as a parent than some high-paying executive job. Exactly. Oh, if it, someone was on the fence about going to Medjugorje, would you, um, what would you say to them? I would say you need to go because it's a transformation. You don't know how it's going to transform your life, but it definitely will transform it in some way. Mm -hmm. And tell them how I did want to go, but I felt I had to go. You know, it was just like, if I don't go, my husband's not going to go. And then I would re be responsible for him if he would fall away from the faith. Mm -hmm. So I knew it was a necessity for me to go. Mm -hmm. So. I, and I honestly have to say, though, it's through the Medjugorje Prayer Group that I think it has sustained me all these years. I feel going every Sunday to the prayer meeting has been is like a shot in the arm every week to keep going with my spirit. I'm going with my spiritual life. That's good advice too. Prayer groups. Our Lady says prayer groups. Right, because you see everybody else mm -hmm. that's been there and is struggling the way you're struggling, mm -hmm. but they're remaining in prayer. So. You know, Cass told me the story uh, when it happened of the uh, wanting a ticket. To, he wanted to go to Medjugorje so bad he told Father Blank, I need to win the jackpot so I can yeah. get a ticket. And Father Blank said, if that's the case, then you'll win. He blessed his, his bingo card. Yeah. He won. <laughs> and, but then he told him, I, I, that's not enough. That's only half a ticket. I need to win the next 
uh, jackpot. Uh -huh. And Father Blank said, if that's your motive, a ticket to Medjugorje, you'll win. <laughs> and he blessed his bingo card the second time in a row. He won the jackpot. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah, that's great. You know, Father Blank, who blessed those uh, bingo cards for Tony's husband, I never met Father Blank, but he was the pastor. I knew he was dying, mm -hmm. and he loved Our Lady, mm -hmm. the pastor of Corpus Christi Parish. Mm -hmm. And so I sent to him through somebody a picture of Our Lady of Medjugorje, mm -hmm. and that had been blessed by Our Lady. Mm -hmm. And he, I found out later that at the, the moment he died, he, he had it right next to him on his bed by his bed where he was dying. He sat up in bed, he called out Our Lady's name, looked at the picture, and died. Praise God. He was a great he priest. He was a really great pastor. Yeah. Loved the Blessed Mother. It's too bad we don't have him around now to I bless our him. lottery sure tickets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Praise Jesus. Hey, tell us about the next testimony. Right? Well, I believe the next one is going to be Shirley Summers. Right. And Shirley is also a South Bend uh, person, and she has been part of the prayer group that helps run the uh, National Conference on Medjugorje at Notre Dame every year. She works very hard on it, she and her husband, Ray. But Shirley shares about her trip to Medjugorje and how it changed her life, and then subsequent ch trips and the beautiful things that Our Lady has done for her and through her. Oh, it's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. Listen to Very Shirley good. Summer. Shirley prays the rosary with us every day yep. on the internet. Yep. Uh, we first read and heard about Medjugorje not till the winter of 1987. My neighbor gave me a newspaper article by Wayne Weibel, which many of us, I think that's how we were first exposed um, to hear about it. I read the article and I thought, wow, something so beautiful is happening in the world. Uh, but it was November, so of course it was Thanksgiving time, Christmas time, and that all got pushed aside. But the first part of February, uh, one of the cousins of the visionary was here in South Bend. And uh, I think her name was Dragisa, and she spoke at Our Lady of Hungary. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, Ray and I went to hear her speak. And we were so taken by this. We, you know, we just we we talked about it a little bit on the way going home, but not really knowing or understanding what was going on. I think in our hearts. Um, but the next morning, I called. I never met Irene Toth before. Called this lady, Irene, and said, "Said, could you send me some material on Medjugorje?" Um, and I called Ray at work and said, because I, I was at work, and said, uh, "Ray, can we go to Yugoslavia?" Six weeks later, we were gone. <gasps> Uh, but in the meantime, we had told our youngest daughter, Mary, who had just recently been married, uh, married a very nice young man who was not Catholic, didn't practice any particular faith, and she said, oh, Mom, I would love to go with you and Dad. And I said, well, come with us. And so she made arrangements to come with us. And Dave said, that's fine. I don't care if you go. It meant nothing to him, the Blessed Mother, and all that was very foreign to him. And, uh, but at the last minute, he wanted to go, and I think a lot of it had to do with, oh, we're going to Europe. And that's all it was for him. So anyway, Irene, of course, we went with her group, and Mary and Dave, she arranged a later flight, a couple days later, actually. So they flew into Dubrovnik, went to the car, drove to Medjugorje. So we met them there. So one day, Mary and Dave and Ray and I were climbing Mount Krusevek, and we were going, and as everybody knows that has been there, what a difficult climb that is. Uh, and we were going up, and about the 10th station, Mary and Dave were up there at the station already, and we were waiting for some people to come down in order to get to reach them. And I looked at Mary, and I said, she was standing so still and looking rather strange. And I said, Mary, what's wrong? And she turned around and she says, Mom, she says, look at the sun. And uh, so when we got up there with her, we did, and Dave, her husband, was there also. And we just stood there and we just, we didn't say anything for a long time. And, uh, and I said to Dave, I said, Dave, do you see what's happening? He says, I see it, but I can't understand it. I can't comprehend this. I don't know what's happening. So we stood there and we prayed for about, about 25 minutes. We stood there watching the miracle of the sun. And I recall very vividly that some people were walking down the mountain and uh, this one man stopped us and he said, what are you doing? And I said, well, we're praying and look at the sun. He said, don't look at the sun, you're gonna hurt your eyes. And he walked away. And then another little oriental lady came down and she said, what are you doing? And, and I said, look at the sun. And she says, 
oh, could I stay here and pray with you? She saw what we saw. So we continued our journey to the top of Kruzovic and spent time up there in prayer, came back down and had many beautiful, fruitful days with, with Mary and Dave. And, and Dave was really quiet, was very quiet. He's a, he really can speak quite well and talk a lot about things, but I think he was so taken with the area and where he was and what might have been going on, whatever was going on in his heart. Mm. Uh, and I remember on the way home on the plane, he um, asked Mary, our daughter, he said to teach, teach me to pray the rosary. This was in March. And he said, teach me to say the rosary. And uh, she did, or they prayed it on the plane. And, I, and that September, he uh, joined the RCIA class and became Catholic the following year. Now, his parents uh, were very pleased about what was going on with him. But they, again, they did not really share in this, but uh, they were happy you know, for their son. And of course, it's been, a, been very, very fruitful for them, as well as for all of us. But I think the crux of all of this, my story, the, the benefits, if you will, the fruits of Medjugorje, and as I've said to you before, Kathy, I should probably be very embarrassed and ashamed to say, going there and knowing that Mary and Dave were going to be with us, I never prayed for anything. I never said, God, we're going to pray for Dave's conversion. I, I knew things were happening there, what we had read in the paper, what people had told us, the miracle of the sun, the rosaries turning to gold. All that was out of my mind. I never thought about that. That happened to other people, not like to us or me. And, but we received that, that beautiful gift of, of the conversion of Dave. Um, and the other big thing it was for myself, it was a personal thing. Uh, again, I did not pray for this, but I was going through a time of, uh, uh, I, that I needed to, to do some forgiving. And it, while it didn't come right away, uh, it came about, and I was able to let go of some things. And so that was very important. It didn't happen immediately. It was many months later, actually. Okay. But it came about. It came about. Um, but like I said, again, those were the fruits uh, for us, things that we didn't even ask for. I, we asked for nothing because, as I said, that happened to other people. You read about these things or you, you heard about them from other people. But I do remember very vividly when I first read that paper article uh, from Wayne Weibel that, well, wouldn't it be wonder? It's wonderful uh, that, we're, that Our Lady is appearing because wouldn't it have been wonderful to, be at, to have been at Fatima and Lourdes at the time the Blessed Mother was appearing there? But she is, and she was appearing. And I thought, what, what graces and what blessings for all of us. So I also said, uh, this was 20 years ago for me. Um, I was 54 at the time, and I remember talking to Father Gaelic one time because I said, I really feel that my spiritual life began then. And I said, why did I have to wait so long for this? He said, this is the time God offered it to you, and you accepted it. Because I felt we did all the all the church things, never miss mass, raise the children the way we should, but I felt that it, my spiritual life, in retrospect, was superficial. I can see that now, but that's when my spiritual life really began. I'm very grateful for it. Oh my gosh. So thank you. Oh, that's so beautiful. And you've been back several times since then. Yeah, not as many as you. <laughs> <laughs> but about, we, we've been back about eight or nine times. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's really, we really almost feel like you, I'm sure. That's our second home. Second yeah, home. yeah. Like yeah, it really does. Yeah, it's very special to both of us. Mm -hmm. yeah, to, yeah, and to my family. Yeah, mm -hmm. and we were very fortunate. Two years ago, we took our daughter, we took Ellen, well, I know you know that, mm -hmm. and our daughter-in-law, Terry. Oh. And I think it, it was really very fruitful for them also. Oh. So, yeah, it was, it was a blessing for us to see Medjugorje through their eyes. Oh. That's what was the blessing for us. Yeah. Have you, have you gone with groups usually? Usually we have. The one time we went, Linda Ong, Ray and I went back um, several years ago uh, to work with Sister Muriel. And we went for two weeks to work with her. Uh, and we, we just went there specifically. You, 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 I know you know her work. And uh, we went there to, just to help her to go to the villages every day to take the supplies to the people. And you could share about that? Yeah, could you go oh. into just a little bit of detail about oh, what her work is? Sure. Sister Muriel uh, found herself there in Medjugorje during the war. Uh, we first met her there in 1994. We were there again with Irene, and sister, that's when we met Sister Muriel. And we went to Mostar, and it's, uh, I think we went with um, uh, Lada's. 
Thank you. Yes, and 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 Irene was with us, and we, Sister Muriel was with us, and they were. Sister Muriel found herself there, and and she was on sabbatical, and she said she saw the ravages of the war, and while she knew that the there was orphanages being put up for the children, and the young people seemed to take care of themselves, but nobody cared about the old people, the government, or no one cared about them. You know, they could just that they could just die. Anyway, she took that on herself and very slowly apparently uh, started working, getting, gathering supplies and um, uh, taking care of the old people. Now this was not in Medjugorje. These are all in the outlying villages as, as you well know, or towns I should say, uh, a very large radius area. And uh, so the one, when we were there and knew what, of her work, we started collecting supplies, not only medical supplies, but clothing, a lot of um, like chucks and diapers and things for the people. We, every, every group that went over there, we sent suitcases filled with supplies for her and the old people. Well, and then that one January, sister said, come in January, there's not many people here, it's cold, nobody wants to come at that time. So Ray and Linda and I went that January, one January a few years ago, uh, to work with sister. And, and so each day we would um, go attend mass in the morning and uh, then we'd come back and uh, we lived with them. Um, Franca, who was right across the street from where Sister Muriel's uh, lived. And uh, so then we would gather all our supplies and we would fill her van, which was gutted in the back, and there were hooks hanging in the back, and we would go to 10 places every day and we would hang bags of food and supplies on these hooks in the van, and uh, the, away we would go with her to, uh, to the outlying villages. And we would come back late in the afternoon. But um, I have an album of pictures that shows these people how they lived. Uh, uh, there, were, there were people who were, you know, mentally retarded. Uh, old people, I remember going into this uh, one hovel, a uh, winter, we're talking winter now, there may not have been snow on the ground, but there was ice where water was formed. And uh, there were no doors on the stone houses, uh, just a curtain covering the doorway. We went in there and the three sisters were living together. One was in bed all the time, and they just had uh, like blankets on the walls because the walls were of, were of stone and they're cold. And uh, they, so that was, and there was no heat, no toilets, not even an out, not a, not even an outhouse. There was just nothing in these places. But every house that we went to, and we went to like ten each day. We went, and sister said she ministers to the Muslim Muslims, the Croatians, or the Serbs. It didn't matter; they were all God's children. And uh, every time we left the home, we always prayed. And they, most of the time they prayed with us. They were grateful for the food we brought, the clothing that we brought. There was one lady that we went to, and she was sitting in her house just by herself, dirty. The, the, she did have a stove in the house, but the pipes had come apart, so the soot was coming in the house. So Ray kind of fixed that to make sure that it went outside again. But you could hardly even see her in, in this atmosphere of soot and dirt and dust. Um, but I, 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 when I came back from there, I said, I will never complain about not having enough again or that I don't have things that I would like. I, I could never complain again after I would see how these people lived and how grateful they were for what Sister gave. They were not bitter. They were, they were just old people that nobody cared about, and, and Sister did. And she still does to this day. I, yeah, she still, she and Mary, I know that they're still, still working. And um, it's just, but that was a real blessing for us to be able to go over there and help her and work with her. Oh, yeah, yeah. And of course, through her efforts, now she said America, Ireland, and England were very, very generous to her as far as getting supplies. And um, she said that uh, uh, you know people just donate so much cars and vans and things to her uh, for her work. And through her efforts, she, her dream was to build a house uh, where people could go to die in dignity. So in Biakovici, no, not, I'm sorry, in um, Labuchki, tw about 20 miles outside of Medjugorje, the house is complete, and uh, there's, I think, enough for 50 people to go there, men and women, and then Sister uh, Muriel and Mary, and I'm sure they have a board, they decide who can come there. You're not just like the mayor's wife, if she was, or her mother and father can live there when they could take care of her. These are people who are really destitute and have no one or nothing, and they come there to live and uh, they live to live and to die in dignity. And I, she said one lady, because when she would write to me and tell me when, you know, with some things that were going on, 
she would say uh, that uh, they would they came there in their black dress and, and with probably nothing and they saw all the all the beauty of this new house and room and clean clothes and just the cleanliness and food which they didn't they didn't have now her latest project is she wants to build a hospice house I don't know where that that I don't know but it maybe it's near Lubuchki I I don't know but uh, yeah. but it's a beautiful place and uh, so that was her dream and it all came from donations wow. yeah from people from countries from you know just individuals anybody that went there whatever it all became you know her God's plan and and he saw to her getting it done yeah so wow. it was beautiful That's so wonderful. yeah yeah, so Sister has done some marvelous work there. She is, I think she's about 10 years old. Sister's probably about 10 years older than I am. She's, I think she's probably 84. And God bless her, she could run circles around Ray and I. I mean, she just goes, she just goes. And so God has given her a great gift. Uh, and she's from here in the States mm -hmm. and from the East. And, Does she uh, know the language now? So oh, you know what? She, when we were there, too, she said she doesn't, not, not that much. She could pray in Croatian. Okay. And we learned a little bit enough, too, to be able to pray with the people when we, and I was just so pleased about that because, as I said, every house we left, we prayed. And I just remember so vividly, you know, no matter how bad these hovels were, these stone houses that people lived in, beautiful, beautiful black and white family pictures on the walls of their mothers or their fathers or grandparents, you know, pictures that you would treasure and they lived in the direst needs it was just 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 wonder how people even survived but maybe just because of their hardiness there and um, I, I don't know but it, it was just they were just beautiful people right right and like I said, I think what amazes me the most is that going there without asking, without any expectations, and maybe that was the beauty of it for me. I, I just, we just going there because we knew that she really was there. We believed that. But again, that was all, everything that was occurring was for other people, not for us. We were just going there to, to be a part of that and to be in the actual area. Because I always, I thought my whole life, even as a child, wouldn't have been great to be at Fatima and Lourdes when Our Lady was coming, to live at those times. But we are living in those times. You know, Shirley mentioned that Irene Toth, who died a few years ago. She brought many, many people from the South Bend area to Medjugorje. Mm -hmm. I remember when she went on her second trip. Irene? Irene, long ago. She asked me, do you have any advice? I said, yes, don't leave Medjugorje and don't um, complain about anything and watch what Our Lady will do for you. <laughs> the first time she had gone to Medjugorje, it was kind of a side trip of going up the Adriatic and going to shopping. She was, she was quite a tour agent. She took people all, all over, over the, the world. world. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, I had suggested don't take it like a tour, the pilgrim, and stay in Medjugorje. Well, when she came back, I remember she asked me to come over to her house. She wanted to tell me about a pilgrimage. It turned out that there had been a mistake made, so there wasn't a bed for her in the house. This is like in 1987. There wasn't a bed for her in the, in the house, and so she had to sit up all night long in a chair, and she told me she had kind of cried for herself. She said, felt so bad, but and she didn't leave Medjugorje, but when she came back and was telling me this, her story of her second pilgrimage, she couldn't do it without crying because Our Lady had touched her so deeply. Praise God. And then she was instrumental in bringing so many. She brought many people Medjugorje. from South Bend. This is Irene, and uh, Irene was a good friend of Shirley's. And um, it really is beautiful uh, to see what Shirley was able to do uh, uh, through Sister Miriam to bring Muriel. Muriel, that's right, Sister Muriel to no, bring uh, aid to. In her testimony, Shirley mentions Linda Ong going oh, with yeah. her once. Linda Ong's a doctor, a local doctor, who was a Buddhist who became a Catholic because of her pilgrimage to Medjugorje. There's just so many testimonies. Praise God. I hope that the members of the commission are watching this program tonight. This last testimony, Sharon Amaya, is just incredible. They're all incredible. I like the way Sharon shares um, about the slow, methodical steps towards faith she made through the help of Our Lady of Medjugorje and especially through the messages. You're going to really be interested in the way she was led step by step into a very beautiful and deep prayer life with Our Lady 
and into the heart of the church. You know, one of the things I, that's a lesson for me is she was very simple, and she would just read the message, and whatever Our Lady would say, to do, she would do she'd it. do it, and all this grace would come into her life. Amazing! This is this is beautiful. A beautiful testimony from Sharon Amaya. Well, I wanted to talk a little bit about my conversion and how Our Lady's messages affected my life. They were so powerful in my life, and they brought about a true conversion and brought me to her son. Uh, I had a surrendering to God. It was a couple days before the new year of the Jubilee year 2000. Mm -hmm. And I was with my family, and we just had um, celebrated Christmas together, and we were going up to our cottage in northern Michigan. Mm -hmm. And I had a surrendering to God uh, on my knees behind closed doors, mm -hmm. and I was sharing uh, a room up with my brother up at our cottage. And we went up there, New Year's Eve of the millennium. And my brother asked me about 10 o'clock, if I wanted to learn how to pray the Most Holy Rosary. And he didn't know that I had this rendering to God, but I had, and I said yes. And what happened was, is he taught me how to pray the Rosary, and he gave me a message booklet of Our Lady's Messages of Medjugorje, and also another book, Queen of the Cosmos, and was written about Medjugorje and the visionaries and the messages of Medjugorje. Well, I read that book, Queen of the Cosmos, that night and the following day, and I learned how to pray the rosary. And I had the little message booklet of the, uh, Our Lady's Messages of Medjugorje. And I went back home, and one of the messages that Our Lady said was, I invite you to pray the rosary and fall in love with my son Jesus. And I said, well, maybe something does really happen here. Maybe you do pray the rosary and something really does happen. So I bought a crucifix, and my brother had gave me a really good scripture book of the rosary, and uh, also Our Lady's picture, or her image of Our Lady of Medjugorje. And I took them home, and I placed them on the coffee table, and I said, okay, Lord, let us start to pray. And something unbelievable happened to me when I started to pray the rosary all this love and joy and peace came into my heart immediately as I started to meditate on the mysteries of the rosary. And I realized that I was having a joyful meeting with my Savior. And one of her messages of Medjugorje does invite you to pray, pray, pray until you have a joyful meeting with your Savior. And I started to pray the rosary. And you have to understand that I was 44 years old at the time. And I didn't even know what the Holy Trinity was then, or the Holy Spirit. Wow. So I had really very little background. Uh, I had been baptized in my 20s, but I didn't even know what I was doing then. I didn't have the proper education even to be a baptized, but I was baptized. But I went through that process, but I really was uh, not praying for many, many years. I had been taught the Lord's Prayer by my mother when I was younger, but I had not kept up that prayer. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have a relationship with God because I had no prayer. And Our Lady's messages taught me how to pray, and she directed me toward prayer with the heart. And when I started reading those messages, I started uh, to read one or two a day because she asked us to do that, and I tried to follow it because I started realizing that her message of the Prayer of the Rosary um, resulted in so much joy and peace and love in my life that I tried to start to live the messages. I made, even though I failed a lot of times, I made that initial beginning. And so I started to, one of her messages said to join a prayer group. And at that time, I, I didn't know anybody who, who told me that they were in any prayer groups. So I didn't know really what I was going to do. But Our Lady found a prayer group for me within just a few weeks. You know, I, uh, I'm, on, I'm in a prayer group called Roses for Mary that I've been in for about six years. And uh, I've stayed in that prayer group. We pray for priests and for personal intentions, but it was a beautiful, it's a beautiful prayer group. And I realized that she didn't want me to just pray by myself, but she wanted me to pray also in a group. And what I also realized is that she wanted me to hang blessed objects in my home. I didn't know what a blessed object was at the time, but uh, I found out and I started to hang up blessed objects in my home. And during this time too, it was only within two months, my brother's parish in Atlanta or Alpharetta, Georgia, was having one of the visionaries come and speak, Yvonne. 
and he invited me to come down and hear him speak. And he had an apparition there with Our Lady during that time. And uh, I just knew that Our Lady was present there. And I knew after hearing the testimony of Yvonne and hearing Our Lady's messages, and I was continually reading them and praying the rosary, uh, I knew I wanted to go and find a Catholic church after I left there. So within two months, Our Lady had me going and finding a Catholic church and leading me to the sacraments of the church. And uh, I realized that she wanted me to go to confession too. And, um, and she asked, invited us to go to monthly confession. And after that, I found a little, uh, my brother gave me a book of uh, the Divine Mercy message. So I decided to go to confession because our Lord says to go to confession, and he said that his own blood and water that poured forth from his sacred heart on the cross would have come down upon your soul and ennoble it and cleanse it and purify it. So I said, I, I want this. <laughs> I want to be cleansed. And I had been through 44 years of my life not knowing what confession was. You know, I saw it on TV. I had heard about it, and, but I, I had no idea what it was. And I realized the messages in Medjugorje and the Divine Mercy message, what confession was. And so I went to confession. And I hadn't entered the Catholic Church yet, but it was an initial start in going to confession. And then after that, um, when I went through the RCIA program, I went to a more formal confession, where a more lengthy confession. And I experienced so much peace. Uh, through going to confession and trying to live all these messages of Medjugorje. Another thing that happened to me too was the fasting that she asked for. You know, she asked for fasting on Wednesdays and Fridays, it, on bread and water, if you can do that. And I had to work myself up to doing that. At first, you know, I wasn't used to fasting at all. and. Um, I try to, you know, begin fasting just on bread and water, just maybe till three o'clock in the afternoon, then till five o'clock, and then the whole day. And I realized that my prayer was so strengthened by the fasting, that there was an incredible joy in the prayer, and also that prayers that I was praying were being answered when I made that sacrifice, when I tried to, um, my father had been away from the faith for many years. He was raised Catholic. And um, I really believe that it was partially due to my prayer and fasting that he went back to confession after 50 years on Divine Mercy Sunday, mm -hmm. which was such a beautiful grace. Mm -hmm. And he's expressed a desire to receive Jesus in the Eucharist again. And this is the other thing that Our Lady led me to was the Most Holy Eucharist. Because within two months she had me looking for a Catholic church. And I started to look for churches and I found a beautiful parish in my area that I knew right away when I walked in, Our Lady wanted me to join there, and Our Lord wanted me to be there. And I did not realize Our Lord was present in the tabernacle then, but I would go and pray there and uh, by myself and uh, started to pray more and more the rosary. I had so much joy in praying the rosary that I wanted to pray it right when I got up in the morning, and then I'd go to work, and I'd want to pray it on my lunch hour. Then I, when I came back from, from work, I'd want to pray it again. <laughs> because I wanted to uh, experience the joy of our Lord, and he was teaching me so much through the prayer. This was the beautiful, beautiful uh, experience that I was having, and the Holy Spirit was guiding me through that prayer. And I was discovering the personal love that our Lord had for me uh, in the prayer, which I didn't really realize before. Unfortunately, I went through many years of my life not realizing how much our Lord really loved me. So I started to want to pray more and more. But then I, as I started praying in the church, and I started to try to go to the Mass, because Our Lady was inviting us to go to the Mass daily, if possible, I started to go to the Mass, and um, I realized Our Lord revealed His real presence there for me in the Eucharist. So I wanted to uh, go to the Mass even more. So I started trying to go daily. And uh, when I went through the RCA program, you know, I was able to uh, fully come into the church and um, also, you know, to eventually experience that true joy in receiving Jesus in the Holy Eucharist. And after that, our parish started um, a Perpetual Eucharistic Adoration Chapel. 
during the time I was in our CA program, and Our Lady also invited us to go to Eucharistic Adoration. Uh, so I started to get very involved in adoring our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament, and I still, to this day, try to go every day if I can. Uh, I'm a, I go to Mass every day, uh, unless I'm sick or something, some emergency, but I always want to go to the Mass every day to receive Jesus, the Living God, and the Holy Eucharist, and to adore Him in the Blessed Sacrament. It is so powerful to be in the presence of our Lord, to experience His peace and His love and His joy there, and to have a personal relationship in conversing with Him. And the other thing Our Lady asks us to do is to read the Holy Bible every day. So I started to try to read the scripture readings, and I got involved in a Bible study class. Our Lady led me just by the hand. She took me by the hand, and those messages changed my whole life into um, a daily living with our Lord. She says, let every moment belong to Jesus. And I started realizing that my life was just changing little by little because before that I was filling myself up with a lot of emptiness. I had, um, you know, I was involved in a lot of sports and I was involved in my career and I was involved in entertainment, just going out with friends, you know, enjoying myself, doing a lot of shopping. Through the prayer and through the change in my life, I realized that I did not need to fill myself up with these empty things. Not that a career is bad or that playing sports are bad, but I had no time or room for God. And I realized that Our Lady was asking us to put God in the first place in our hearts and our lives. And this is what happened to me, is all those things that I did before um, and uh, spent all my time doing, I realized that God was replacing with himself mm -hmm. and that suddenly I wanted to learn more about the church the Holy Father, the saints, the angels, Our Lady, you know, our Lord. I wanted to be close to Him all the time. So this is what happened to me with the uh, messages in Medjugorje. And also my brother's a convert to the Catholic faith. And a week after I came into the Catholic Church, we went to Medjugorje for the first time together with a small group where there were 10 of us with a priest from his parish. And it was an incredible experience. Uh, just the joy and the peace and the love that is there in Medjugorje and the presence of our Lord and Our Lady is so powerfully experienced there. The grace that really came from Medjugorje for both my brother and I was that the Mary Our Mother Foundation was formed. My brother felt inspired to start the foundation and we have a spiritual director, Monsignor Marin, from the Georgia area. And this foundation is, non, is a nonprofit ministry, but we spread our ladies' messages of Medjugorje and the Divine Mercy message, the message of the Rosary, and it keeps growing. We have CDs and audio tapes and booklets, and uh, we go to a lot of conferences in, um, in spreading our ladies' messages. We put display stands in parishes and bookstores and ministries that have gone throughout the country and also abroad. So Our Lady and Our Lord has opened up so many doors for the ministry, and we owe it all to them. We try to stay out of their way and let them do, let them do whatever they want because they know what's best and they've really graced the ministry. So we've been so thankful to be an instrument for them and be able to spread Our Lord and Our Lady's messages in this way. And I just say thanks be to God. Wow. Thanks yeah. be to His mercy and His love and His peace. Praise God. Do you have a uh, website? We do. Can it's maryourmother.org. Maryourmother.org. So, thank you. <laughs> <laughs>
It's so fitting to hear from me to hear these testimonies on Thanksgiving night. Oh, I find myself, as I listen to them with tears in my eyes, filled with thanksgiving. Praise God. Look what our lady's doing with her messages. I can't help but think all the hours I spent in the library at Notre Dame in the religious section, spiritual section, with all these books on methodologies for... And they're all kind of boring. And just our ladies' messages are so filled with grace. Mm -hmm. And reach right to where we are. Right to where we are. Yes, they're so concrete. Like Even like uh, the concreteness of what Maria shared when she was at Notre Dame last Thursday. Mm -hmm. The concrete ways in which Our Lady taught them how to pray. The importance of confession, how to fast. One thing at a time she would introduce into their life, mm. and then it would bear fruit and if they obeyed, if they listened. Oh, and this lady, wow. this Sharon, her, it's the same thing. She would take one or two messages and just start to live them. And she would just start doing it little by little, and my gosh, it moved her oh, right the into the church, right into the prayer Maria group. Maria used a phrase that, that, listening to these testimonies tonight, comes back to me. A, about a river? Oh, well, she, one thing she, she said that I thought was cool, she, slowly, slowly, Our Lady would lead them. But she, Maria shared in her talk last Thursday that um, when she and the other prayer group members went to Rome to see the Holy Father, and they encountered a lot of people, and people would say, where are you from? Where have you come from? They would say, we're from Our Lady. And they would share from the bottom of their heart their experience of Our Lady. But she said, it was like a river that must find the sea. So full of water that it must flow to the sea. The grace in them was so great, it had to flow out of them. It had to find um, others. And so it, I thought that was a beautiful oh, you can see here analogy. In the testimonies we're having tonight, that mm -hmm. river is not just for Maria, but all those mm -hmm. who have allowed Our Lady to come in, her mm. presence to come in from Medjugorje. Yeah. Praise Jesus. The grace is just flowing and flowing for all of us, to us, through us, for each other. It's incredible. If there's anybody uh, from the Commission watching tonight, <laughs> yeah. Michael O'Carroll, Father Michael O'Carroll, the author of Theotokos, an encyclopedia that Our Lady said in 1991 at Notre Dame in a lecture, the good fruit of Medjugorje is unparalleled in the history of the church. And boy, is that true. These are just testimonies we happen to just grab people, just like Rosie does for Tea with Rosie. These she has very, no idea what they're going to say. These are very hey. random, but yeah. every pilgrim oh. seems to have a mind-boggling, um, life-changing testimony. Praise Jesus. So come back next week to Fruit of Medjugorje and continue to join us for the Rosary and for Tea with Rosie. and uh, Every day, live. Tea with uh, the rosary. <laughs> Coffee with Dennis. Consecrating the internet <laughs> to Our Lady of Medjugorje <laughs> with um, Mary's children on six continents. It's so exciting to sail on this boat on the digital sea. That graces, all the graces. You know, wherever there is a heartfelt response to Our Lady's call, it's like a door from heaven opens and the graces are just incredible. And they're growing. The graces are increasing. These are the days that scripture referred to when it said, to those who have more will be given. To those who don't, even what they think they have will be taken away. So let's, let's in this year of faith, grab each other's hand and just receive all the graces being poured out from heaven today. And on this Thanksgiving day in America, let's all just say, thank you, blessed mother. Amen. Alle, 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 alle.